I just turned 30 this year. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure my algorithm has figured it out because I have been inundated with content of women talking about their 30s and I picked up on a little bit of a pattern. I realized that you can pretty much assign one of five categories to single women in their 30s. We have what I call the late bloomer, the extreme feminist, the marriage-minded gal, forever 21, and the one who's in girlfriend purgatory, as I like to call it. To being 30, I've decided it's gonna be totally awesome. Now, I personally, fall into one of these categories. One thing that you're gonna learn about me, I am very self-aware. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. I have really bad breath in the morning. And I know myself better than anyone. I mean, I'm very, very much aware of my flaws and my insecurities and what I bring to the table. And yeah, I'm definitely one of those things. But once I describe each of these types of women, you have to say in the comments which one you think I fall into. Also, if you interpret this in any way besides self-aware humor, then that's a you problem. It's not a me problem. It will be a self-reflecting. Come to Jesus for some and a roasting for others. No one will get out unscathed. You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you. Good luck. The late bloomer. Not only has she never gone on a real date, she's never been kissed. She absolutely loves pajama sets, okay? Flannel, silk, shorts, pants, every print from teacups to cats. She prefers old Hollywood movies and Chinese food. She's beautiful in a girl next door way, but struggles big time with letting people walk all over her in her personal life. It's highly likely that she's a secretary, an admin, caregiver, teacher, or any other career that requires a lot of selflessness and caring for someone else's needs above her own. I'm a nice person! She's the book recommendation friend and she prefers a good old fashioned romance novel the most. And even though she can be perfectly witty and flirty in her head, it just translates as awkward garble in real life. You can, you do, you, you want, you, you. Once she tried to strike up a conversation with a guy in line at Chipotle, and she said, you have such clean fingernails. <laughs> She's the nicest person you'll ever meet, but inevitably feels like a wallflower in every social situation. Mm -hmm. If you are this girl, you just may be oblivious to it because she really is. She has no idea that she's just slightly offbeat. If this is your friend, it is your duty to take her for a makeover, purge her closet, take her out. The late bloomer is the kind of person that has to be taken under your wing. Don't leave her to her own devices. She's single because no one wants to be direct with her or take it upon themselves to introduce her. She is a romantic comedy lead actress waiting to happen. Then Kristen Gibby, what's up girlfriends? Are you in special ed? But we have to cast the right people to work alongside her so she can shine. The extreme feminist. Oh, run. They really out here thinking that they're doing something. Now, if we wanna be super granular with it, there's the blue hairs and the don't cares. I'm focusing on the don't cares this time. They don't care when or if they get married or have kids because they're all, if it happens someday, cool, but I just don't care about that right now. If I wanna have a family, I can worry about it in my 40s after I get the promotion. I'm gonna die alone. Oh no. Now what's honestly super sad is that this is a huge cultural programming that has been done to young women. It is driven hard that a family is always there if we want it, whenever we want it, and actually it isn't. These women are in for a big wake up call. Science can do a lot, but it can't do it all. Get home now, the kids are all dead. IVF isn't a guarantee, it's a gamble. A guaranteed disaster. Like eating a burrito before sex. And the longer you wait, the less likely it will work. But IVF and Big Fertility aren't gonna advertise that. They want that money. F the patriarchy. What patriarchy? Well, the only way to find value and build self-esteem is by climbing the ladder. 
You are literally a cog in the machine. You can be replaced in an instant. The only place that you're not replaceable is motherhood. Mom, can, can you pick me up? I'm scared. They've bought into this lie that selflessness is a flaw and selfishness is a virtue. But you won't turn a profit on an investment like that. Now, once they realize their mistake, it's usually too late. Some biological ships have sailed. You will never be able to go back. This exacerbates depression, loneliness, and resentment. And you give all of yourself to a company that would never give all of itself to you. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Don't teach a man to fish and you feed yourself. And subconsciously, you lean into this false sense of security that has been buried deep into your brain by the fertility industry. They think that biological clocks aren't real. Uh, it's 100% real. But guess what? It was all a scheme. Time's up, but not on the patriarchy, on you. Me? <laughs> Now the marriage-minded gal, every man who semi even glances her way could be her future husband. I'm not married. Did the barista just make eye contact a second longer than usual? Maybe a hot new caregiver got hired at Mima's nursing home since the last time I visited. I should probably go check on her and bring banana bread and curl my hair, cause you never know. She says yes to absolutely every single social event, even if she overbooks, because he can be there, damn it! Where are you? Overcommitting is a lie from the devil himself if it keeps you from the commitment. I need a man! I need a man! <laughs> She's wandering around Home Depot looking confused. She's cooking pot roast with the window open in case the smell drifts to the right person. Wedding stress? Not her. She has everything planned out already. All she needs is the guy and she'll plug him right in. I accept. Nothing would make- Excellent, I'll start the plans. For tomorrow we read. No. Every Saturday, her married friends check in. Any cute hinge dates this weekend? They're all hopeful and trying to be supportive, but the response is always the same. No, nothing. Don't you get it? I want to go on a date. I'm lonely. When there finally is a date, her friends are calling in the middle of it. Well? They say, he literally just told me that he's on an all bone broth diet to cure his irritable bowel syndrome. And now he's talking about his Guitar Hero streak from ninth grade. Her parents have just stopped asking about men. Last Easter, she overheard her aunt asking her mom, could she be a lesbian? We don't know, Brenda. We just don't know. Casual hookups? Forget about it. He could be on top of her and she'll ruin it by saying something like, are you a city boy or a country boy? Or what's your biggest fear? I like sex. It's nice. The Forever 21. Ladies, if this girl's in your friend group in your 30s, I'm begging you to drop her. If it's you, I'm begging you to seek help. I call her Forever 21. When you go out, she's constantly getting asked how old she is. And at first you were offended. Does she seriously look that much younger than me? No, she doesn't. She just chugged Guinness from someone's shoe. It is 9.30. You just got to the bar. It's a gay bar. She's making out with someone. He's gay. It doesn't matter. You take a shot, she takes three. Now she's posting to her Snap story. Let me say that again. Now she's posting to her Snap story. I'm addicted to being an adult baby. Sometimes you forget what she even does for work because she never talks about it. She only ever talks about college. The drama she rehashes is from sophomore year. You're a basic. She has absolutely no clue what is happening in current events. You asked her who the vice president was and she said, Wendy Williams. You didn't ask for clarification. You start to get anxiety as soon as her name pops up on your phone with a text. You feel bad ghosting her because you've been friends for so long. She's single in her 30s because she has no desire to grow up and she's dragging you down. Honestly, if you're also single, she's probably the reason why. It's, it's all, all your, your fault. fault. It's all, all your fault. fault. Guys see the two of you together and they're making a snap judgment on you based on her. She is now known as the liability. Just start a second group chat without or make excuses for why you can't hang out and then just stop answering. Forever 21 stops being cute after 25, but she's 37 and she just puked in your face. Disgusting! Number five, the girl and girlfriend purgatory. All right, here it is, the uncomfy truth. Do I want to know? I don't think so. 
if you have been dating for over three years, you live together and he says things like, babe, marriage is just a piece of paper. You are in girlfriend purgatory. Welcome to the hotel hell. Check-in time is now, check-out time is never. And the sheets are made of fire. You are making the dumbest mistake of your life right now. You idiot. At 24, meh. But at 34, dump him, move out. His friends aren't that great. He never takes you on dates and somehow you still cook him dinner every night and do his laundry. You even drive him and don't get me started on women who drive in the relationship. <laughs> This truly could get its own 45 minute think piece. He'd rather stay home and play video games than go to dinner with your friend and her husband. Gary, on the kick drum, come, come. On the kick drum, come, come. That's Gary. And every birthday or anniversary, there's an excuse on why your gift is late if you even get one. The only person who can save the girl in girlfriend purgatory is herself. You have to make a breakup plan immediately. For Pete's sake, don't dump the guy that you live with and then keep sleeping in the same place. You have to be ready, overnight bag packed, to go stay at your friend's right after the conversation. Never see this face again. If you stick around, he will do every trick in the book to guilt trip you into continuing the relationship. Babe, I know I want to marry you, just not right this second, but I'm not going anywhere. Well, he's partly telling the truth. He isn't going anywhere, not as long as you let him. He's going to continue mooching off you, and I don't necessarily mean financially, but emotionally for probably six months until he finds a better option. Because now that you've had the breakup conversation and you put it in his mind that you're trying to escape, he's going to leave you. He just has to find another sucker girl to manipulate. So when he tries to convince you not to break up with him because the ring is just coming, he just needs more time, the writing is on the wall, okay? You just have to decide if you want to forfeit the upper hand or not. The purgatory girl is single because she's wasting time with the wrong one when she could be meeting the right one. But in your 30s, you have absolutely no time to spare. Also, he's been using your eye cream and your shampoo, and your special hand towel for his balls. <laughs> if you're single in your 30s, which are you? And you have to be honest. You have to be honest. Keep it real. They're going to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Which one do you think I am? And are there any types that I forgot? Tell me what you think in the comments and thumbs up this video and subscribe before you go. I know some of these are funny, but on a serious note, older women who've bought into the feminist lie and regretted it, you've got to start warning the younger women about the mistake that they are so close to making and the door that is very close to closing. Oh, for those who are in a season of singleness in their 30s, what do you think is to blame for that? Is it themselves or something bigger?